Welcome back to this video. We're going to continue uh, the study of um, image processing. We finished by the first uh, hands-on and now we, we continue with new um, new concepts and new application in this uh, in this video. So first uh, <coughs> we're going to talk about the uh, effect of sampling and quantification. Uh, the fact is that uh, on a camera sensor we have not an infinite number of small cells and these cells have a typical size. So there will be a spatial quantification due to the pixelization of the image and this will have an effect on the quality of the image. Also, there is a second level of quantification, which is the quantification of the gray levels. We don't have an infinite number of uh, gray levels. This is defined or this is constrained by the number of bits on which we're going to store or encode the, uh, the data. So we recall that for n bits, you have access to two power of n a number of gray levels. So for a one bit image, you have only two gray levels, two power of one. For a bit image, you have 256, two power of eight um, gray levels. And we also recall in the previous video that the human eye is only capable of distinguishing um, 200 gray levels in an image. So this is the reason why most um, images are encoded at least on eight bits because uh, if you don't reach this level, then you will see some details uh, that are missed. Uh, while you cannot distinguish them with your human eye if you are above 8 bit. So here you have the effect of the uh, spatial uh, quantification, which is uh, the, on the left side, you would have what you would have if you had an infinite number of uh, pixels which are, will be much much smaller but with this size of pixel this is a type of shape that you will have access to uh, while imagining this round uh, pear like uh, shape. Uh, the quantification uh, also is done at the level of uh, the, uh, the gray levels so there is two levels of quantification first sampling which is a spatial sampling and then quantification on gray levels which give you a second uh, level of uh, somehow compression or a reduction of the infinite uh, via spatial viability and the gray level viability of the analog uh, world. So uh, visually, the effect of the spatial uh, resolution will be like this, that when you reduce the uh, spatial resolution, meaning that you increase the size of the pixel for the same size of a scene, then you will lose uh, some details, you have a loss of clearness and you see the pixelization. And on the uh, lower parts of the image, we will see what, you, what happens when you reduce the number of bits and you start to see uh, some uh, fake uh, variation, fake edges and uh, quantification uh, noise, which means that uh, your eyes see that somehow there is something uh, strange in the way the image is encoded compared to when you have a hard, much higher number of bits. Okay, uh, so now we move to a new uh, tool for uh, describing uh, an image which is called the histogram. Histogram is displaying the number of pixels according to gray levels. So uh, it's a global description of the gray uh, level intensity and it can be seen as a probability distribution of gray level intensity. It's a very useful tool to analyze, to improve or to transform image and the simplest segmentation techniques come from the analysis of the histogram. And basically, when you see some, uh, some uh, valley uh, in the histogram, this is the message that there is something here where you could put a threshold in. So how do we compute an histogram? For instance, here you have a two basic two pixel image. If two pixel, the two pixels have the same intensity, well, the histogram is only one beam uh, like here. If the two pixels have different intensity, then the two, uh, the two gray levels are, appear here. And if you have many of this uh, uh, gray level intensity, you have something uh, like this, where the um, 
minimum value corresponds to uh, the minimum gray level present in the image and the maximum value, the maximum uh, uh, gray uh, level. So that's the dynamic of the, uh, uh, the image. Here you see uh, different uh, histograms of the same uh, image and we could compute here on this one what would be the uh, histogram of this uh, image. So for instance here we have uh, the, what the computer will do when computing the histogram is counting for each gray level the amount or the frequency of, of this uh, gray level. So here for gray level 1 we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we would have a bin uh, at 9. Then for gray level 2 we have uh, it appears 1, 2, 3 uh, times so we would have uh, 2 at the level 2, uh, 3 at the level 2, and then uh, for 3, it's a 3, so 3 at the level uh, 3. Something like this would be the 3 uh, beans of this histogram, of the histogram of this image. So we will have uh, an hands on on uh, these uh, images, and so please check out the video corresponding to, to this so that we can uh, see how to uh, observe the histogram and somehow process them a bit. Um, when uh, you um, play with these two images. Oh, sorry. Okay. Now, uh, in this uh, course video, we continue by um, uh, studying how we can do some operations on imaging by transforming the histogram. Uh, so, histogram uh, for each uh, value of gray level in initial image, you can uh, compute a new value in transform of relative image. So, the main transformations are resizing the dynamics, especially when you have an image which is, uh, has a minimum value which is not zero and a maximum value which is not 255, the maximum value you would expect, then it's possible to expand and to resize the dynamics so that your eye would completely uh, take uh, benefit of. Uh, the dynamic uh, that you would have on an uh, image coded on 8-bit. Uh, also, you can take the negative of an image or you can do some kind of equalization, we will uh, see this later, uh, apply some thresholding or enhance some, uh, some specific gray level by exponential or logarithmic modification. But basically, uh, <clears throat> this is a transformation that would take uh, input gray level, apply a function and get the uh, output gray level. So, we have an example here with piecewise linear uh, function where as input you have x axis and as output you have the y axis here. And so we see that for each gray level between 0 and 80, we will keep the uh, 0 uh, level. For between 80 and 180, we will have a linear piecewise function and then we will get saturation uh, from 180 to um, 255. So this is an example of the type of function that you can have. Here are two other examples. For instance, if you want to do thresholding, then you apply this kind of uh, binarization um, uh, function where each gray level between zero and the threshold is kept to zero, and each gray level between the threshold and 255 is um, put to uh, 255. So in this case, you have only two gray levels in the end, and you have a binary image. You can also produce the negative. Uh, image, for instance, by just applying this uh, function where 0 becomes 255 and 255 becomes 0, that's the negative image. So when you want to resize the dynamics, so this is this, uh, where this piecewise linear uh, function is useful, because if you take this image, for instance, all gray level that were uh, started at 100 becomes uh, starting at 0, and all gray level ending here ends at uh, 255. So it's like just you were stretching uh, the uh, histogram to fit the 0 255 dynamic. Equalization is something that is useful if you take uh, images uh, to flatten the, the histogram. I would clearly uh, not advise you to use it in any real scientific uh, situation, so not to, to take into account, but it's it's nice if you are, uh, so it, it tries to somehow rebeam uh, the histogram in a way which would be the maximally flat uh, histogram while not completely changing the content of the, uh, the, the image. It's really uh, clearly not uh, useful in our uh, case. 
uh, exponential of logarithmic uh, function can also be applied. So this is more like, um, yes, uh, transformation you would apply in a kind of paint shop uh, or infographic uh, way if you want to change a little bit the way your images look like, but maybe also not really in a scientific context. So here uh, again, we will have a small hands-on on resizing the dynamic of the uh, image. So please check out the corresponding uh, uh, video. And uh, let's continue for the, the course. Um, so now we come to uh, a focus on the thresholding. We have seen that it was a way of manipulating the, uh, the histogram. So basically, <clears throat> this is looking for a threshold, a value. Uh, where all the value below this threshold will put to zero and all value um, above this threshold will be put to 265. So that's a way of doing some classification. So it's a simple technique for region segmentation and um, it can of, co of course be um, uh, improved in, a, in any way, but it's already a very uh, uh, powerful uh, technique if you want to do some classification. And especially when you have very basic uh, or very well contrasted uh, images. Uh, so where, for instance, you will really see uh, a peak in the histogram, which corresponds to actually a background, let's say, and another peak in the histogram, which corresponds to the object. So in this case, putting a threshold in the middle is really uh, a very simple approach. And it will be very powerful if these two peaks in the histograms in the histogram are really well separated somehow. So after putting this threshold, uh, you will have one being here at zero and one being here at 255, you have a binary image. So <clears throat> this is very useful in controlled environments where you can really completely control your lighting system and the contrast you want to have on the object. So for uh, computer vision in, um, let's say, uh, yes, growth chamber, phytotron, stuff like this, this can be very uh, uh, powerful. And you will put the threshold somewhere, yes, uh, in between the background and the, uh, and the object. We will see how to do this uh, in Imagi in a further video. The question is, uh, when you do this uh, in, uh, manually, if you set manually the threshold, uh, is it how are we going to choose the threshold uh, fully? Uh, there are some mathematical uh, functions which have, have been uh, developed in the image processing literature. Uh, which proposes automatic way of um, uh, fixing a threshold to do some segmentation. Uh, however, uh, none of them are really dedicated to uh, a specific uh, a specific uh, biological application. So none of them is dedicated to segmenting background from uh, the, the, the cell. So they are not expressed in this way. So uh, uh, a good approach can be to, to test all of them. I will show you how to do uh, this and uh, to pick up the, the method that would be the closest to, to, to what you would expect if you will have tuned it manually. <clears throat> so now let's move to uh, other type of uh, computation uh, to be done on uh, imagined, images with arithmetic uh, calculations. So we are not now going to uh, process the histogram anymore, but we process directly uh, the, uh, the uh, images. <clears throat> And a basic uh, computation that can be done uh, between two images is to make uh, the summation of these two uh, of these two images. So <clears throat> this can be uh, done uh, basically when you have when you have low light and you want to gain a little bit more light. So if you have low light, uh, you would say, okay, let's just uh, open the camera a little bit later. But if your scene is moving, maybe it's going to be difficult. So uh, uh, another way uh, is, uh, if possible, to uh, stack several uh, images which have been acquired uh, with the object at the same position, and by summing them, you will have uh, like a simulation of more lights. Yeah. So, uh, in this case, uh, there is a, a small issue, is that when you will sum uh, several images, the gray level that you will have after summation can exceed uh, the maximum gray level that you will have uh, uh, allowed uh, the computer to give to a, 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 an image. For instance, if you are encoded on 8 bits, your maximum gray level is 255. So if you do the summation of two gray levels, uh, which exceeds 255, then you will have an error 
for the, com uh, the computer because it did not allow to encode uh, grade levels higher than 255. So one way of doing this is to do the average value of the two uh, images so that you remain between 0 and 255. Another way is to take the minimum so you saturate and uh, we will see a last way. Uh, so none of them is really uh, uh, satisfactory because um, it's not exactly doing uh, what we would like to do as a summation of two images. So the, 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 the best way of doing it is the way uh, image is doing is to allow actually uh, the computer to uh, do the exact mathematical calculation by giving a little bit more uh, memory to the image to encode it on a higher number of bits and I will show you how to do this later in another. Okay, uh, let's skip this one. Um, uh, if we can do uh, uh, addition of two images and we can also do subtraction. Something I did not say I have to mention is that uh, if you want to do addition of two images one uh, condition is that these two images is two matrices must have exactly the same dimension. You cannot uh, make a summation between two images which would not have the same dimension. But if they have the same dimension, then you can do addition and you can do also uh, subtraction. So for subtraction, the issue is the same that if you do uh, this subtraction, you may have some negative value or you may have some value which are uh, which exceed uh, the, the typical value that you would have uh, in, um, uh, in the original uh, encoding of the data. So one way to do it properly would be to uh, allow a little bit more um, memory so that uh, you can encode in actually positive and negative value and also you can go uh, between minus 255 to 255 and we will see how image is doing this. This is very useful, this uh, subtraction uh, approach. Uh, when you have two images where everything almost in the image is, has not moved, but exactly what you are interested in um, uh, has just uh, changed. So for instance, if, if you want to track uh, vehicles uh, on, the, on the road, if you want to track in biomedical imaging, uh, like blood coming in or uh, coming, uh, coming out, um, if you want to see movements of the, of the leaves, then this is a very useful way of highlighting only what has been changing between two images. Because everything which is still will be to zero, and when you, everything which comes in will be positive, and everything which comes out will be negative. So here, yeah, a more poetic view of this kind of operation, but not really applied in this case. Okay, um, so this is a new Anzan that we will uh, uh, go through, so please check out the corresponding video. And we come uh, with a last uh, type of operation, which are called logic operation. Not that the previous uh, operations were not logic, but this one, this one is specially adapted to binary uh, images and corresponds to uh, what we call uh, logic uh, computing. So by logic computing, we mean uh, some operation like here we say, okay, uh, union of uh, two uh, objects, and it will be called A or B. So that's the equivalent of union. So if you have two binary images and you make the union of the two objects, that's the or operation. And if you want to have the uh, and operation, intersection of two objects, uh, that's what it produces, so that's the name and. I prefer the union or intersection, which is somehow um, uh, a little bit more um, intuitive for uh, non-electronics. This comes from numerical electronics, actually, all these words, not NAND or XOR, not an AND. So basically, the only one we really use are the uh, intersection and union of two binary objects. That will be uh, uh, useful uh, uh, stuff in our course. So for instance, if you do uh, AND, uh, so let's recall, AND is intersection. Intersection between the two, you can highlight only one part of the uh, image which is of interest while keeping it in the whole context. So in the last enzyme for this part of the course, we will use the muscle image and the spot image and do a, a OR, AND and XOR between the two images to see, uh, to manipulate this. So please check out this video. 
So this is it for, uh, for now and we will continue in the next video on working on how to denoise uh,